G'day folks. Now, there's no doubt I've had many questions over the years about how I put together this splitter on my MX-5 track car in a kind of DIY home-built ghetto sort of methodology. So I figured why not take the time and take you guys for a bit of a tour of how I put this thing together. Righto, so let's start with the basics, I guess. The actual material or the, the splitter body itself is simple Baltic birch plywood in I think maybe 12 mil thick. A um, bit hard to get here in Australia. I managed to find it at a place called Plyco, I think the brand name was. Um, probably bought it, I don't know, a few years ago now. And a single sheet wasn't exactly cheap for plywood, um, but it was so long ago that really the prices are irrelevant. You'll find it wherever you need to find it in your area. Um, if you're in, in Australia, Bunnings plywood's pretty crappy quality. This stuff's a little bit better, sort of more marine grade, which I don't know what that exactly means, but it certainly held up rain and things. Um, it's held up well to, to that sort of stuff. It doesn't sort of fall apart, rot, delaminate, or anything like that. And the car has been driven in some inclement weather over the years. Um, that said, I have painted it with a oil-based paint. Um, it was actually painted white originally and then I've hit it with some just generic black spray paint to hide the ugly whiteness for all the bits that you can kind of see obviously. So the bit at the front here that is obviously black, that's just some spray paint over the top of the white. You can see here it's white further back here. That's where I haven't bothered to paint it. But yeah, that's the sort of the, the structure or the, gen the general body of the splitter. Um, the key thing, I guess most important part about a splitter is mounting it to the car and that's the bit that's hardest to work out. For me, I, I needed it to be kind of quick release in some way or another because having splitters that are sort of hard fixed are just such a pain in the ass for a car that's low, a small car like, like this, the MX-5, they're inherently smaller and therefore lower to the ground than even other larger cars. Um, and obviously having to get it on and off a trailer to take it to and from the track means that a big long splitter that st sticks out far ahead and also is very low is very hard to, to get on a trailer. So quick release, um, easy to remove was something I had to consider. So I thought of the idea and I'm sure it's been done many times before of using sort of a pin and a hole to, to affix the splitter to the body of the car. So I've got these triangular shaped um, aluminium tube mounts and at the bottom here is a piece of tube and on the splitter is some metal alloy rod kind of thing that pokes through the tube. Uh-huh, yeah. So effectively that's all it is. That's kind of the main vertical stays that hold the splitter to the car and that's kind of bears the majority of the weight of the of the splitter. I'll get some close-up shots and you'll be able to see sort of exactly how it's all held together up close. I welded the tubes all together myself so they're hardly anywhere near uh, glamorous welds but they're holding up so I guess that's all that matters in this case. Um, they have been through the, the, some, some wars a few times. They have, you know, hit some curbs and stuff with the splitter and bent or damaged these and had to kind of pull them off and straighten them up again. But for the most part, they're holding up okay. They're certainly able to hold the load that this splitter generates, which I don't know how much that is exactly. Um, but regardless, they seem to be working well. Um, I do have some extra bits of, well, it's all aluminium for the most part. Uh, aluminium angle here and then a bit of tube at the back there to kind of give the splitter some extra strength because I guess plywood isn't isn't the strongest thing over such a long span it does suffer so in the middle here it could sort of flex so we've got a bit of alloy angle here that sort of bridges across and it's all bolted in it's not just sort of screwed in I've used nuts and bolts because um, yeah look they last they're holding up fine over a very long period of time now None of the bolts have come out. They've all been held in fine. So I, yeah, really it's been working quite well. Now obviously mounting the splitter from two spots is great, but there are, the fundamentally this splitter is quite large for what it is. So I've had to reinforce it with the steel cable. So I've got two that run at the front here. They're obviously a bit loose at the moment because it's just sort of mocked up. For, for your purposes. And then I've got two at the outer extremities of the corner here. So 
There's one here that runs up to just beside the headlight. So that's how far the steel cable is. But it goes through the bumper, so most of it is hidden. Um, these two at the front here, obviously the bumper usually lives here and there's a uh, sort of ducted shroud that runs around them. So these are kind of in the airflow of the radiator intake, so to speak. So they are, yes, these are draggy, but they're necessary and I can kind of consider them um, you know, a necessary evil, but the benefits outweigh the uh, negatives of having them. These are also kind of quick release, so pull a pin, slide it a little, and they're, they're undone. Bam, the splitter can come out. Likewise, the pin that holds this guy in place can come out super easy. Push, push on the little button and it slides out, and then my splitter can slide away. So. That's kind of the core structure and how it all works and how it's all held together. Um, the only other thing is at the back of the splitter where it joins up towards the subframe, sort of just under the engine area, there's a bit of C-channel aluminium and the splitter slots into that. So at the back of the car, I slide the splitter in, the channel goes in to get into the splitter and we're all happy. At the front, the pins hold it, the bulk of the weight there. And then at the extremities, stainless cable. The other thing that's obviously a component of the splitter are the end fences on the, the, uh, the sides here. Uh, it's just a design I made up myself. It's not sort of aerodynamically designed in any specific way. I just saw what other fancier cars have used and copied the general shape, made it fit my application. It's just got some aluminium uh, right angle brackets down the bottom here, bolted in across this side, bolted into the, to the body of the splitter. Again, held up fine. Uh, damaged one at Sandown a little while earlier this year and the, easy th the good thing about them is they're relatively easy to replace so I have had to do that. The actual design of the splitter or the shape of the splitter itself, again it's something I've just come up with myself just based off A, ex past experience and B, just what I thought looked cool fit the bill, seemed like about the right size as a guess, but realistically it's all just made up. Um, there are notches around here to accommodate the wheel and allowing it to turn, it's full rotation, but for the most part it's a fairly sizable splitter, particularly for an MX-5. Um, we're looking at at least, I don't know, 150 mil between the sort of the body and the outsides of the car, so a fairly sizable um, a sizable amount of lip on the splitter. Um, obviously there's normally a bumper here that would hide the guts of the car and then there is also some plastic stripping to sort of bridge between the bottom of the bumper and the top of the splitter. And that's kind of pretty much all of the structure of this thing and how it works. And just a couple of other little I guess features or interesting things I've tried in the past. Um, first of all Underneath the metal bracket here that attaches via the steel cable up to the body, uh, there's a bolt through a piece of Dalaran underneath the uh, splitter here, which acts as a kind of skid block. I've had to replace it a couple of times because obviously the splitter scrapes it. it you go around a corner and you hit a curb and it's sort of, it's a sacrificial piece to help protect the, uh, the ply so I don't have to replace the whole sheet of ply on a sort of regular basis. Instead, it's that skid block and obviously the, the outermost ends here are the part that is under the most load or I guess most, uh, most likely to scrape being so far out, um, outboard of the sort of center of the car. So yeah, some skid blocks definitely seems like a good effective thing to, you, to do if you're going to uh, consider something like this for your car. They were helpful. And another thing I did is I've got some holes which I've now blanked off, but there were some holes here where I ran knacker ducts to try and feed my brake duct hoses, which you can see the hose there. Um, I decided against them after putting them in. Uh, I'm not so sure that they were effective. I don't know if we've got the right sort of airflow underneath the splitter to feed those knacker ducts. So those, those have now been blanked off. But yeah, there were some holes there where I used to run knacker ducts. I'll probably have a photo or something I can chuck up on here to show you what that looked like when they were in place. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my splitter and how I put it all together. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of sort of DIY ideas put applied to this thing um, and I really wanted to, as 
best as I possibly could with my limited skill set, put together something that was quick release but practical and not excessively costly. Um, and I think I achieved that for the most part. Nonetheless, hope some of these ideas might be applicable to your track build at home. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.